Country Place Greenhouse Show. We're located directly across from Lebanon Springfield Airport on Highway 55. Now right here you see all these different types of tomatoes. We have Whoppers, Better Boys, Big Beef, uh, different brandy wines, some of the heirloom tomatoes. These are four inch pots and these cost a dollar and a half. Uh, for a dollar and a half for a four inch pot, that's really a nice growing plant. And we have sold quite a few already, but not like last year because of the weather. But it's something that just takes time. And tomatoes, of course, don't like to be put out when the weather is cold. They're not really a, a cold weather plant. They're more of a, a warm weather plant. But you can see we have our tables full of tomatoes. We also have some 1204s, which is a, a pack of four. And they're a lot of the same varieties. There are some varieties that we don't put in the four, uh, 1204s because of the cost of the seed. But you go ahead and if you want a smaller plant, you can select those as well. Over a couple, three benches, we have the cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower. That's the bigger green plants over there. We should have been, those plants all should have been sold by now. We should normally would sell out of those plants before this time. But because of the cold weather and the way it worked out and the rainy weather, people just weren't able to get in their gardens, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just something that uh, we have coming along that really those big plants are good. We also have some younger plants. If somebody wants some younger plants, they would be fine. Uh, they do very well. As you look up through the greenhouse, you can see that we do have a good selection of plants that are ready to go. Uh, we have the uh, petunias, snapdragons, marigolds, just all different types of plants. The hanging baskets are coming along very nicely and uh, they should be really, really in good shape in a couple of weeks or a week. Actually, they're in good shape right now if you want to buy them. Now, one thing about hanging baskets, you got to remember, you got to feed them. Sometimes people forget about feeding them uh, the fertilizer. When I talk about feeding them, I mean fertilizer. And you have to feed a, a hanging basket at least one time a week. Otherwise, it will become long and leggy and stringy and it won't look as good. And then plus two, you have to trim it. I've had shows before where I show people how to trim, and we'll get more into that later on as the time goes on, because trimming is very important. Uh, most baskets do require a certain amount of trimming. Now, a lot of people ask about, well, how do you water hang a basket? Well, watering is a very subjective type of game you play. Uh, you may have a lot of sun, you may have just a moderate amount of sun, you may not have any sun at all. So those are the things you have to consider when you're watering. You have to kind of feel the weight of the basket and kind of go from there. You don't want to go ahead like on a hot summer day. If you know it's going to be really hot, especially like a New Guinea impatient or a bounce impatient basket, you'd probably definitely want to water that in the morning rather than wait till night when it's all wilted down. Even though they'll come back, that's why they're called bounce. But they, they would do better if you were to take time and water them in the morning. So those are some just some basic tips that you have in relationship to growing uh, the hanging baskets. And we have two different sizes. We have the 12 inch basket and then we have the 10 inch basket. Now down here at the other end, uh, Patsy's working on tying up some tomatoes, the bigger tomatoes. And we do have them in a six inch pot for uh, $3 if you want some. If you just have to have a bigger tomato, we do have them available. And then you can see just behind Patsy, you can see all of the uh, cabbage and broccoli, the smaller plants that are starting to get just perfect for, for transplanting. But we have to go ahead and take a time. Uh, we'll just have to wait this weather out. I mean, uh, it's just something we just have to have to deal with. Over here, uh, we come through, we got one customer here. He's working away, getting his product ready. We have geraniums that are real nice. These are attendant, the nine inch geraniums. And then we have some dahlias and different plants. We have some begonias. And then we have the uh, bounce uh, impatience behind them. 
uh, mountain and uh, sun loving impatience. So those are some of the things that you could, uh, depend upon which one you like, you can go ahead. Now this is the uh, citronosa plant or the mosquito plant, as people call it. When you rub it, it does provide a nice fragrance. And it, it does seem to, a lot of people swear by it, keeping the mosquitoes at least down. And so, and it's a nice plant. It's just a nice big green plant and it grows very well. So, I mean, there's two aspects of it. Uh, one, keeping the mosquitoes down, and number two, it's a nice plant to go along with it. Now, we have some smaller geraniums for people. Uh, this is called the seed geranium, and we do have that. And that's a little lower in price, uh, but we do have quite a few varieties of that and the seed geranium. The wave petunias, we have that in a multiple of colors. They're in a four inch pot and they're quite prolific and growing. Now one thing I do want to mention about your basket that you see up on top and all. What we use is we use like wave petunias and we use the uh, what they call vining or the uh, type of petunia that will vine rather than the type of petunia that grows upright. Uh, sometimes the baskets you see that are sold, they're sold relatively cheap. They're just regular petunias put in there and uh, they don't tell you what, what you're really getting, whether you're getting a wave or you're getting a petunia that is uh, more of a vining type petunia. And that's kind of misleading in some respects, but that's all we use in our baskets is vining type or the uh, wave type petunias. Now we have uh, verbenas too, and then we have uh, the calabacoas up here, and different plants that you can use in your landscape, uh, the bacopa, and then we have the lantana. The lantana is a great plant. It attracts hummingbirds. Uh, I think for the season you can use the hummingbirds. They do very well on the next table over. But uh, these are plants that can be added as a along with your with your landscape material or with your general planting. Behind me over here, we have some snapdragons that are coming along really well, and we have regular petunias. Now the regular petunias, like I said, that's great for just putting in your own flower pots, or if you want to put them in beds too, as well as the waves, and they do very well. And then we have the marigolds and uh, elysium. Elysium is a great plant. It does really well once you get outside the greenhouse. It's a little bit of a problem sometimes if we care, carry it too long in a greenhouse. But we do have Elysium, and then behind that we have Portulaca and some Salvia, and there's some Colises at the far end of the table. Now Begonias, over in a couple, three tables over, those are always a good plant. And the dark leaf Begonia is the one that will grow in the full sun. We do have some green leaf, that will, it likes more shade than it will. I mean, it can grow in the full sun, but the leaves turn a little red. We also have impatience, different kinds of impatience. We have double impatience and regular impatience. So we have a good selection and we're ready to go whenever you are. I'd like to thank you for listening to the Country Place Greenhouse Show today. I'm Bernie with Country Place. We're located directly across from the Lebanon Springfield Airport on Highway 55. Stop in and see us.